May I take you on a journey? Because I would like to take you on my journey. And undoubtedly, the most extraordinary journey of my life. You see me looking at a house. It's a neglected house, no longer habitable, but it once was. It's an orphanage, and I was born in this house. My life started in India, in Goa to be precise. The first six months of my life I spent in this shelter for unmarried mothers. And after those six months, my biological mother gave me up for adoption. As a young baby, I flew from India to London, and from London to my final destination, Amsterdam. As I arrived, I was greeted by a loving mother and a loving father. And from that moment on, they were my parents. And from that moment on, I was their daughter. I grew up knowing that I was adopted. My adoptive parents never made a secret of it. And in elementary school, I gave a presentation about my adoption. I was proud of the fact that I was a girl with not one, but two mothers. Well, who could say that? I was grateful for the huge opportunity that I had been given, as if I had won the lottery. I grew up in a good house, a warm home, a good neighborhood, and I had friends who I played and grew up with. But sometimes, deep down inside, I found myself pondering and thinking of her, the unknown woman, my biological mother. Who is she? Where is she? But above all, is she happy? And the big question for me is, does she still think of me sometimes? She once had to make the hardest decision of her life, giving birth to a baby girl and then giving her up for adoption. What is her story? What is her past? And what motivated her to make this hard decision? She gave me the chance for a brighter opportunity by putting her own feelings aside. Well, that, people, is the most amazing gift I have ever been given. This is my opportunity, and she has given it to me. So in 2018, I took the trip back with my adoptive father to India. I felt I was ready for it. Uh, I was very, very curious if I could feel a connection with the country I was born in. But I was also very curious if I could identify myself with the Indian people. <laughs> Do I look like them? Can they see that I'm from India? I wanted to discover that part of India within myself. So as we flew above India, I looked down and I saw lights in the darkness. The thought that my biological mother could be way, way down there made me tear up. In a way, I felt like coming home, as weird as it may sound. Thus far, I haven't been able to find my biological mother. But I did visit the orphanage from the organization that had arranged my adoption. And while I was there, holding a little baby boy of only a few weeks old in my arms, I broke down. More than ever, I was aware of the fact that 40 years ago, I lay there myself. And as I said goodbye to each baby individually, I whispered to them that I wish that they would have the same bright opportunities in life that I have been given. And while I was standing there between all of those babies, I knew that I've discovered that part of India within myself. But it also has a downside. For a very long time, I wondered if maybe I wasn't good enough. Could that have been the reason why she gave me up for adoption? I've always felt that I had to try a little harder than anybody else. 
not everybody gets the winning lottery ticket, and I had given this opportunity. I noticed that I haven't been able to connect to my biological mother the way a baby normally does. Somewhere, part of my foundation was lost. That's why I initiated an intensive therapy tragic last year. I came to the realization that in many aspects of life, I set the bar way too high for myself. I learned that I may accept myself for who I am, with all my shortcomings and all my insecurities. But before that, a lot of things had happened. My adoptive parents weren't able to have children of their own. That's why it, is, it was a miracle that six years after my adoption, I became a big sister. My brother Danny was a medical miracle, and we had a wonderful youth together. And as I was a little older than him, I was allowed to mother him a little, which he did not thank me for, but I think it's okay. When Danny was 10 years old, a brain tumor was found in his head. He lived for 10 more years, which was a really hard time for the four of us. But we traveled a lot with Danny and did many things together as a family. Unfortunately, Danny stood no chance in his unfair fight against cancer. In December 2008, my very best friend, my brother, left me alone in this world. I've lost the person who had always shown me how to stay positive. My buddy, my friend. But above all, I wasn't even longer a big sister anymore. And with his loss, I lost a little bit of my shine. And from the moment that Danny passed away, I felt that I had to enjoy life on behalf of him too. And when my adoptive mother unexpectedly passed away five years later, the feeling that I had to seize each opportunity life offered me became even stronger than ever. Even though if that would mean that I would have to change my life. And then opportunity called. In July 2014, I received a phone call from a friend of mine. He asked me if I heard about brownies and downies. Well, let me explain to you that Brownies and Downies is a unique lunchroom where people work with a slight mental disability. Our vision is to give these people a meaningful place within society. We help them to, con we help them to become more confident, contribute to their overall well-being, and focus on their qualities rather than their limitations. I immediately loved this concept, so I wrote a letter. And not long after, I was invited for a meeting, which I ended by the words, so I really get to make this happen in Roermond? Well, the answer was yes. And during my brother's illness, I've experienced up close how important it is to have that meaningful place within society. Because in the end, we all want to feel worthy and seen for who we are. The chance to live was taken from my brother when he was only 20 years old, but I had just been given one. By having seized this opportunity, I now feel able to create opportunities for others. So that's why I devoted all my savings to this project and started this adventure without knowing what the outcome would be. I've lost two of the most important people of my life, so what more could possibly happen to me? So one year after my mother's death, and on the date of my brother's passing, I opened my own brownies and downies, in loving memory of my brother. And now, seven years later, brownies and downies is a well-known concept, also in Roermond. I have nine unique colleagues, and many of them have worked for me since the opening. One of them is Sebi. He's here tonight. When Sebi started working at Brownies and Downies, he was a shy and timid young man. He found it very hard and very difficult to make eye contact, and he was very shy. But still, I knew there was more to him than he allowed the outside world to see. We started working, 
and I teach them many things from how to be a good host to even make the best cocktails in town. But above all, I taught him that he is allowed to be himself, that he is worthy the way he is, and that he is allowed to make mistakes, because after all, that's what we humans do. I gave him compliments and I watched him grow, focusing on those things that went well instead of blaming the things that went wrong, because mistakes are opportunities to learn. And by adopting this mentality, Sebi was able to grow even more. And now, seven years later, Sebi is a confident young man who is not afraid to talk to guests and welcome them. Guests see him shine when he walks past their tables. And even at the end of the day, he counts the money in the cash register. He is a well-known member of our team. And I, I am proud. I am really proud. I stood and still stand on the sidelines of his growth. I'm grateful for the opportunity that I could give him. But I'm even more grateful that Sebi sees it. And in spite of their limitations, my unique colleagues live lives that are filled with opportunities. But unfortunately, this is not the case for everyone in this world. I realized it once again during the trip that I took with my partner Tom. Tom and I decided we wanted to travel. Why don't we just do it, I said to him. We only regret the chances we don't take. Traveling is one of my most favorite things to do, and same goes for Tom. But immediately I hear a 100 don't do, don't do it shooting through my head. But I managed to redirect my thoughts to the mindset as I conveyed to Tom that it was this mentality that had me want to open a brownies and downies. So we did it. It was again an opportunity. And it presents itself to me once again. And all I have to do is just seize it with both hands. Two months later, we were on a plane. We bought a one-way ticket to Peru, followed by almost four months of traveling through South America. And even in South America, Seizing opportunities seems to be a recurring theme in my life. We worked the month of December in Bolivia, where we worked non-profit to give food packages to families who live on the streets and have less opportunities. Through social media, we put up a fundraising, and with the money, we made as much food packages as possible. It gives us a really warm feeling. Dear people, my story is meant to show you that if there is a will, there is a way. And I know it sounds cliche, but hey, I think I'm allowed to say it. Life's truly too short to keep on dreaming. Do it, no matter what other people may think. It is your life. You are in charge and you decide. And each moment of the day, you can decide to do it other. Live in the moment. Nothing more, nothing less. Do not wait for later, because what is later? My brother, he did not get a later. Who even says there will be a later? Life is full of opportunities. Look at my adoption, my most amazing gift. So enjoy, because life can change in a heartbeat. So take every chance, seize every opportunity and drop every fear. Thank you.